All right, Cherubs. Right now we're looking at the anatomy lesson of Nicholas Tulp by Rembrandt, painted in 1632. We can identify a couple characters right away. The man giving the lesson must be Nicholas Tulp, and the man on the table being studied must be some sort of executed criminal, since those were the only types of bodies permitted by these types of experiments. In this case, the man's name is Aris Kint, though his real name is much more difficult to pronounce, and he was recently hanged for endangering the life of a man whose cloak he attempted to steal. Nicholas Tulp commissioned this painting, and consequently the painting does quite a bit to lionize him. For example, he's the only one wearing a hat, very fancy. Most importantly, though, he's showing he's in the tradition of Vesalius, the father of modern anatomy. By taking the body of a dead and sinful man, he is able to transform death and sin into virtue. In almost a divine way, he transforms evil into good here. Additionally, the study of anatomy had to be connected to God, and Tulp is bringing a greater knowledge of God to these men, since the body is of divine creation. The Dutch were able to pioneer with this, since, at the time, they were struggling to separate themselves from the staunchly Catholic Spanish monarch. The other men in the painting can be identified through the list that this man holds, but who cares? They all appear seemingly as a many-headed organism with the common goal of learning about the muscles in the arm. Notably, Tulp is studying the man's hand, which, according to classical sources, is an exemplar of God's wisdom. Hands allow men to build civilization. Interestingly, Tulp is not touching the body at all, and this hand actually seems like it's avoiding it on purpose, as if to say, this is kind of icky. But wait, that's not really what he's doing. Actually, the motion he's doing with his fingers has a relationship with the muscle he's holding. The flexor digitorum is the muscle responsible for that movement. Our muscles move part of our skeleton by contracting. Muscles can only be actively contracted. Any extension of a muscle must happen passively as it relaxes. Because of this, muscles attach to our skeleton in pairs. Our bicep and tricep, for example, work against each other. When you move your forearm up, your bicep contracts. And when you move your forearm down, your tricep contracts. In this case, Dr. Tulp is illustrating the movement made by contracting the flexor digitorum, the muscle that controls grip. And now, through the death of Aris Kint, the help of Dr. Nicholas Tulp, and Rembrandt's skilled brush, I think we've all been taught an anatomy lesson. If you like this and want to learn more about muscles and how they work, visit the links we provide for you below. If you want more and more Ski Andy art history videos, please subscribe. It's free.